Stacy Jennings is an asshole. <laughs> I hate you, Stacy. Welcome to the Kobe 2012. <laughs> <laughs> No one can hear you, Cream. <laughs> that, well, that's an actual... Well, the podcast is cancelled. <laughs> In every sense of the word. We're not allowed to make jokes anymore. We're not going to be on Twitter anymore. Well, first of all, we have a Twitter account. Have we tweeted anything? Well, I mean, I tweet out, like, our episodes. Thank you. And I greatly appreciate you <laughs> as a podcast coach. It's always such a curveball when Sincere Jacob shows up. It's, it's so... It's, I don't know what to do with it. Welcome to The Breakup, a podcast about brutally, brutally destroying the things you love by giving them away. I'm your host, Sam Young. I'm your host, Jacob Waska. Um, let's... I think that's enough preamble. Let's just hop right in. Jacob, it's your turn to start this week. Oh, you punished me. I did. What actual piece of shit did you make me watch? (laughs) I like that's the distinction. Actual piece of shit. Yeah, no, it's an actually Uh, awful thing. I made you watch uh, Jurassic World, the reboot semi-sequel to the Jurassic Park trilogy. I think, sorry, this is a slight tangent, but the fact that anyone says reboot, and I think about the reboot reboot, and I get really sad, (laughs) I get depressed, I have a popsicle. Um, I watched a movie about dinosaurs. (laughs) That's what you made me watch, right? Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to give the plot summary now? If you so desire. Okay. So... Just the little, the little straight near the collar, the, the clearing your oh, no, throat. I just hate how raspy my voice comes off on the mic. So, Jurassic World is a movie where the movie starts with two youngish children. Like, one's, I think, a preteen, the other's, like, eight or something. Mm. Seven or eight. Yeah, the kid is younger, but the other kid's actually, like, 19. I don't believe you. In actuality, the actor was 19, but I think he's playing a little younger. I don't believe you. I believe that this is a child of 14-ish. I, I can't see it otherwise. So right, assert your reality. These kids are about to go on a plane, and it is like they are being sent off to war. The mother is, <laughs> is teary. She is actually teary. Uh, uh, Judy Greer, in a very poor use of Judy Greer. And she tells them to, to always be safe, to, help, to sort of do it like that. And they begin to sort of board the plane. And the husband says something like, so much for a last family meal, huh? <laughs> and she's like, I can't believe you make such fucking jokes like this. And I made a movie in my head. Oh, I like this. That was a cross between the original Jurassic Park and Battle Royale. <laughs> like, where the parents knew... That they were sending their children to a Jurassic-themed, like, death camp. Like, their, their, this yeah. theme park was actually a yeah. large entrapment scheme of killing children. Because it's, dis- like, it's so, so unsafe. I like this so much better than the actual movie. And... See, I thought you were going to be like... Because it's a divorce subplot, and I thought it was going to be like... Kramer versus Kramer with dinosaurs. <laughs> raptor versus Raptor. <laughs> I no, I haven't seen Kramer versus Kramer. It's fine. It's fine. But it sounds like a divorce sucks. Mm-hmm. It's not great for children. And yeah. again, this is why I think this this the, the sort of older brother is playing a younger kid because the eight year old's like, oh, they're getting a divorce. And he's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> What? No. I haven't been able to piece this together. And the girls he's ogling are not 19. I, I don't know. I don't rem- I mean, they seemed maybe, of, of age to maybe me. Maybe it's a thing where you get older, everyone looks younger. That might be it. Like, just, he, he is a child. 
And the kid who's <laughs> with him is even younger child. Um, and so, in fact, the Jurassic World theme park is exactly as the same as the Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. There is no practical difference. Instead of Humvees... It's rollerballs with gyroscopes <laughs> yeah. that break. Yeah. Uh, instead of uh, a gift shop, it's a gift shop. Mm -hmm. Instead of Chris Pratt, <laughs> it's an, it's a sexist Chris Pratt <laughs> or whatever. That's a pretty good summation. Actually. Oh, in, instead of uh, what's his name, creepy guy, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Thank you. Thank you for getting that. Instead of Jeff Goldblum, it's yeah. Chris Pratt. Yeah. And we spoke about Chris Pratt's character, perhaps before the podcast, spoiling the mood for all of our dear listeners. You sort of contended that Chris Pratt is playing a sexist character. And I was like, well, it's more fair to say Chris Pratt is playing a stereotype character in a movie that is very sexist. Well, actually, I think I, I said he's playing a piece of paper because I don't even remember his name or anything about him. I don't think he's named. I don't think any of these people... <laughs> don't I don't names. think any of these people have names. <laughs> like, I'm tempted to even just pick any character and go, this man has no name. <laughs> and I can say man safely because I think the number of female characters are... It's two. It is Pretty just sure. two. two. Okay, it's... Three, but one of them is the mother, and she's barely in the movie. Uh, the raptors could be female. The, well, as we know from Jurassic Park 1, all the dinosaurs are female, so they can't Okay, breathe. so there are tons of There's female lots characters. Of females. I'm sorry. Yes. I think someone's already made this joke. Probably have. <laughs> I, I. So, um, why do you hate this piece of shit? I think the big reason I don't like it is because I rewatched Jurassic Park really shortly before I watched this. Oh, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. But it was an interesting side-by-side -side comparison of how to make a movie and how not to make a movie. Because, like, just to focus on one tiny aspect of this, in Jurassic Park 1, the children's mother is going through a divorce as well. This is mentioned once, in sort of passing. But it helps to set up their relationship with Sam Neill's character because they're having, you know, their parents are going through this divorce, so they're kind of clinging to a father figure, a parental figure, and it informs a lot about his relationship with them and their relationship with him. Whereas in this one, it's like, we're getting a divorce. You're sad about it. Be sad about it. I don't think they're even that sad about it. I think <laughs> the, the younger kid is, like the eight-year-old's legitimately sad about it, whereas the... Well, the, 14, teenage, the 14 to 19 year old guy is <laughs> like, he's basically just like, God, you're such a dweeb. Well, he's in denial, right? Oh. Like, that's the thing. Well, no, he like, he's in denial for like five seconds. <laughs> and, <laughs> then then he's, kinda, and then he's like, let's endanger our lives by going off yeah. road a little. It'll be fun. Those We're in the gyroscope. We'll be safe. Jimmy Fallon's here to protect yes, us. Yes, yes, he is. Oh, yeah. fuck. I can't. He I hate Jimmy Fallon already. I hated Jimmy Fallon more. <laughs> Those fuck kids, you, Jimmy Fallon. We haven't even talked about the actual stars of the movie. The kids are just in their own film. Like, they're so tangential to the plot. They're only there so Bryce Dallas Howard's character has sort of something to do. Other than mm. mooning over uh, Chris Pratt. Mm. Mm. Well, I mean, you say that. But the entire, again, uh, when we spoke about this previously, I admitted that yeah, I was just if you this cut up. the runtime of this movie mm -hmm. by a third in seconds, mm -hmm. this is actually a pretty okay movie. Like, it's okay. Well, it's way too long, yeah. Yeah, it's way too long. All right, yeah. But the first third is not good, but it's okay. Yeah. And in that first third, her character is... I am the worst aunt. <laughs> yeah, that is, well, yeah, that's her character. No like, cares. we can talk about wine drunk aunts. We can talk about, like, all, all the aunts of the world. She is the worst. Yeah. Because she would willingly offer to take children to dinosaur-themed death camp. <laughs> <I> remind you. <laughs> that's the meta canon. That's, that's what's really going and on. And she isn't there to look after them. Mm. She's like... No, I will send my unpaid intern to take care who, of them. Who, the unpaid intern who is punished, punished for not actually, like, 
really connect, like not caring too much about these kids. Like she's just doing her job, but the movie punishes the fuck out of her. Well, I mean, the thing is, she gets what? Five seconds of screen time? Yeah. Other than her death scene, which yeah. takes like three minutes. Holy shit, that death scene. Um, okay, I, I... Friend of the podcast, Chris Ross, pointed out that is the first woman to get killed in a Jurassic Park movie. I will say, I watched that scene and I went, this isn't that bad. <laughs> this, is, this is bad. Yeah, it's bad. But I was expecting like slasher horror gore it was pretty gratuitous like she gets swallowed whole yeah but like first the pterodactyl gets yeah, her that and don't... then the whale dinosaur eats both of them well it's that i was expecting like her eyes pecked oh out. okay you i thought was it expecting more... like I see, skin I see, I see. flayed yeah, yeah, yeah like the way you were describing it i was like i was expecting oh you thought it'd be how... gory I, well i was expecting how did this get into a kid's movie oh, okay Obstensibly a children's movie. Obstensibly a children's movie. But it's overlong. Mm -hmm. Like, other than the fact that I know she's going to die, that actually <laughs> looked like a really fun experience. Yeah. Like, I, that would be an amazing ride at the steam park. What? Send your children to die in this giant <laughs> well, okay. dinosaur whale's belly. Secret, secret death camp. Uh, I mean, I, I probably use the word gratuitous, and I think what I meant about gratuitous is it's like so overly wrong and invasive Rather than it being like... It's more that I, I, I just have a different threshold for gratuitous. I yeah. I have different well, it's parameters. a different kind of gratuity. Sh okay. Okay, Mr. Etymologist. Fine. <laughs> fine. You, 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 10 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Uh, yeah, I really... I really uh, the reason I got you to watch this is just because I wanted like an excuse for our to use our platform to complain about well, it. Well... The, the real problem is is that I probably don't hate this movie as much as I ought to because there's That's this fine. there's this generational gap I think mm. of Jurassic Park was the movie mm -hmm. for children your age and around then in, in a weird way even though I wasn't allowed to watch it until I was a bit older yeah no it, it is very much like the generational touchstone yeah. whereas for me I was a bit too young yeah have you ever seen it have you seen it I did okay. I did see it but it wasn't like Dinosaurs. Yeah. It, it, if you saw it when you were young, there's a certain impact to it yeah. that like is kind of indelible. I didn't. Psyche. I don't like dinosaurs That's that fine. much. Yeah. I was. I was into trains, oh. which is why Speed Three is my top <laughs> pick. young person movie. That's the boat one, isn't it? <laughs> well, for, okay. Hang on. There's only two speed movies. First of all, there's no train. <laughs> I thought you were doing a bit for a second. Okay, Atlas Shrugged <laughs> Part ah, 1 that's what, yeah, is the secretly, young person movie. Secretly, Atlas Shrugged Part 1 is Speed 3. It was just Part 2. Cool, significant. Part 2 has more trains in it, doesn't it? I feel like Part 1 has more trains in it. No, because there's the whole, like, the train's going to crash scene in it. No, that's in Part 1. No. that's There's a plane in Part 2. Where, mm, no, 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 no. So there's... Oh, they're all c blending together. Yeah, no. Like, so there's, many bad there's in one... Yeah. The entire deal is about the railway. Oh tracks. no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I, and I was drawn and two, absolutely it turns right. out that health and safety and every government check was wrong. Yeah, that's in right. In fact, yes. In fact, <laughs> they they corrupted this great man's will to power. His, his metal. Yeah, his metal, and people died. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right, and that's the one that involves the doppelganger from. From community. So and, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and it ends with the plane thing, and then you meet John, John Galt. Galt. <laughs> I am John Galt. That that like last three minutes was for only listeners, Nick Stinchcomb. Other listeners, if you want to be more involved with the stupid and name jokes that we go on <laughs> ramble about, please make sure to watch Atlas Shrugged, part one through three. I cannot endorse this message. I I, I can. refuse. Yeah. I can. Anyway, <laughs> Jurassic World. Jurassic World. Uh, but I, I, it's a movie that exists. It's a movie that exists. Yeah. Can we talk about Chris Pratt's character for a, a little bit longer? Okay. Because <laughs> one one more thought about the original Jurassic Park. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I when I rewatched it, I realized like as you know with adult eyes, what a well made movie it is. Well, it's Spielberg, right? It's Spielberg. Well, it's good Spielberg, right? Yeah. Well, there's bad Spielberg and there's good Spielberg. But the thing that kind of struck me is there's there's sort of. Sometimes people get really hung up on plot holes and things, and or they misidentify things that aren't plot holes as plot holes, or things thing I don't like is a plot hole. Um, 
And I think Jurassic World does have some plot holes, mm -hmm. or at least some like logical errors that are made. However, in, in Jurassic Park, there is a huge, huge plot, like, not a plot hole exactly, but like a huge logical error. But it's fine, and it doesn't matter. It's when, at the end of the movie, they're, get, they're about to get eaten by raptors, and the T-Rex appears and kills all the raptors. This could not happen in real life because, as we've established, T Rex causes tremors when, like, it actual earthquakes when it's walking around. So, like, it's it just sneaks up on these raptors and these humans, makes not one lick of sense, but it is a thrilling, amazing cinematic moment, and that's fine. Whereas Jurassic World does not have that; it doesn't have any moments like that that mm -hmm. are you know that wow you like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, tell me about Chris Pratt. Now you killed it. <laughs> Okay. 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 All right. All right. All right. So I realized this on the way over to record that when we sort of see Chris Pratt's character, not when he's introduced, but when we see him sort of like in not on the job mm -hmm. for the first time, he is fixing a Harley Davidson motorcycle that presumably he is driving in the middle of this jungle. <laughs> Speaking of plot holes. And... We established that there seem to be roads of a sort. Because mm -hmm. I think, like, Awful Aunt is in, uh, like, a car or something when she gets the call from her sister being like... Yeah. So there are roads. But Chris Pratt, working on a motorcycle, and he gets up, and he is the most American I have ever seen... <laughs> Another human being for like 10 seconds. Like, even is like, hey, so last time when, when <laughs> I bumped uglies, you know, when Oof. I bumped raptors. <laughs> you know, Chris, you're not listening to this. I know, I know you are Chris, but I, I, meant, I meant Chris Pratt. Mm. But Chris Pratt, you're not listening to this. But I'm sorry. <laughs> I know we need another empathetic word other than sorry, like not... I apologize, but as a, like, I care about where you are right well, now. as a Canadian, when you say the word sorry, that means you are being unbelievably passive-aggressive, so... That is not what that... Is this going to be another, like, Canadian identity is different for different Canadians sort of deal? What are you apologizing to Chris Pratt for? That he had to be in... Not, oh. not this movie. This movie, you made a choice, I understand. Sure, right? Didn't come out as intended. Got the the sequel, money. though. Oh, yeah. Well, I haven't watched the sequel. Uh, Why haven't you? Because it's d uh, even more dire, apparently. There's there's a scene, apparently, in the sequel where there's, like, lava flowing down, like, in the middle of a room. And, like, a dinosaur is, like, looks at the lava and is, like, kind of tests it. Because, you know, that's what you do with lava. And it's sort of, it burns. And then it's like, all right, well, now that I have seen that this is hot, I shall rush through it. <laughs> and it doesn't, you know, melt and die. Because it's lava, Wait, not not hot orange drink. Through it? Through it. There's a lot of plot holes There's there. a lot of plot holes there. <laughs> Cinema Sin, bing! Neil deGrasse Tyson, get on no, this! No, no, no. <laughs> Neil, we spotted an error! <laughs> get in here! What else was it? Anyway, this, I, this, I think this the defining really moment of Neil deGrasse Tyson's career is he makes a tweet or something about... Uh, how Titanic is a perfect movie, except at the end, the stars, the stars are in the wrong yes. hemisphere, and then he's having dinner. And James Cameron, James Cameron, yeah. and James Cameron goes, "Well, Neil, I'm sorry, but despite getting the hemispheres wrong, we still made like three billion dollars <laughs> off of Titanic." You know, I never thought I'd kind of like cheer on James Cameron in any scenario, but there you go. Avatar is a terrible movie, and I yeah. hate people who yes. like it. Uh, ten out of ten. 10 out of 10. Go see it right now. <laughs> Go drop what you're doing right now. Watch Jurassic World. Oh, I thought you were going to say Shatless Shrugged. 10 out of 10. Shatless Shrugged. Uh, is that all you have to say about Jurassic World? It was a struggle to come up with that much. <laughs> Good. Sam. Oh, boy. What piece of shit did I make you watch? You made me watch a totally legitimate speedrun of Ocarina of Time and a totally legitimate speedrun of... Of Wind Waker. And have you seen the, as, bon as bonus content, the totally legit speedrun of Link's Awakening? Oh no, I haven't. I, I, saw, it, I saw it, but I didn't watch yeah. it. Uh, which I just played that game. It's really, really good. Yeah. So, so tell us what the speedrun is like. <laughs> so I was deceived intentionally. 
Uh, these are not speedruns. They're cartoons of speedruns or kind of like parodies of speedruns. Um, that's it. Like, that's what they are. <laughs> they're, they're about seven minutes long, which is why it, it, I apologize. It took me so long to do this because I thought I was kind of had to like, like settle in for watching some speed runs and I kept not finding the time because as as mentioned in the previous episode I kind of got into these over the summer and they can be like 20 minutes or they can be like an hour a couple hours that said each one of those cartoons does follow the world record time <laughs> do they they do oh that's funny like there's an entire there's an entire video where he sort of breaks down all of the glitches and all the all right, the things yeah, he's yeah, doing yeah. and like that's interesting. the first two and says like this is based off yeah, of the yeah, yeah, fastest yeah, speedrun. Yeah. See, that's interesting, and I wish I'd known that. Why do you like these before I go into this? I think they're funny. Okay. Yeah, I mean, all right, sure. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Why do you hate these? I don't hate them. I just... I w- Primarily, I was very disappointed I didn't get to watch any actual speedrunning. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't tell... See, this is kind of my problem. It's sort of a form of, of, of like, calling it internet humor does it a disservice, but this is sort of my, like, shorthand for this. It's this sort of, uh, like, fast-paced, trolley humor that I don't really care about. And it's some of, there were some funny bits. Like, I think um, when he keep in the Wind Waker one in particular, where he, Link keeps showing up on islands and the characters are like, where the hell did you get here? Wait, aren't we like, supposed to be on that Are we supposed to? And then it kind of glitches out and they disappear again. <laughs> Oh, that was, that was I can pretty, fly. That was I remember pretty funny. That. Yeah, but I really maybe it's emblematic. Like I really hate the troll face, and like there's so much troll face in these. Not troll face, but that sort of that kind of style of art where every line on the face is really emphasized, and like it's when Link keeps giving people the double flip. You know, it, like, that okay, that is not a Ren and Stimpy. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the troll face. Like it's not quite that. But there's something about that I find really grotesque and upsetting. <laughs> and it, it just, it, it, I associate it with some really shitty forms of humor. I didn't realize I'd managed to snipe in <laughs> on a really serious bugbear of yours. I, apparently, well, I mean, I'm, I'm overselling it perhaps a bit. I thought they were okay. I think the, um, I think the Wind Waker one was funnier. Um, yeah. I think that was a little better. Uh, and I, the part where, so... To break it down a little bit, he's doing like jokes about the various tricks that you use in speedruns. So yeah. one of them in Link's Awakening, uh, not Link's Awakening, um, Wind Waker, is you slowly build up like speed by moving backwards in the water. And it's because, long story short, the games never set a, a limit on how fast you can go backwards because yeah. they never think of that. And so there's a way where you constantly are pausing and pausing over and over and over yeah. again, rebuilding up speed. So he does he does a joke of that, and it kind of you know, yeah. it, it's hard to explain without like explaining the joke. Um, and that was that was funny. I thought that was kind of clever. And then you know he's kind of wreaking havoc on on um, the world. Uh, what dragon dragon roost island. dragon roost island? Yes. And you know he's encountering like the girl he's supposed to throw up on the the ledge and things. Um, what is the joke with the Japanese stuff he spouts? So okay, because that just was incoherent to me. Uh, so. This is the joke I knew you would have a problem with, mm-hmm. but it's not in the way I was expecting. Well, I just didn't under... Well, A, I, I had the sense that it was vaguely sexist, but actually if you look at the words the person is saying, they're totally incoherent. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, it is a line from the anime Konosuba. Okay. And it is a joke on sexism. Yeah, I assumed that was sort of... Yeah, it. yeah. basically... The original line, like where the yeah. actual scene where that's from, is two people desperately need to use the bathroom. Oh right, and okay. so now that makes and more so sense. the yes. woman is like, "Yo, just fucking let the ladies go first. Yeah. And the guy does that whole speech about I tr- I believe in true equality, where men and women work alongside each other. Yeah, and I don't appreciate how women ex- want men to treat women as equals, yet at the same time demand that they get preferential treatment because they're women. Yeah. And at first you're like, oh, that's kind of risky. And then he animates the character 
Throw a glass. Oh yeah, no, it's he's, yeah, he's not. You know, he's not endorsing. Yeah, no, it. no, he's not endorsing. Although I kept trying to, I, I actually stopped and I tried to read the line, and it doesn't make sense. Like I don't know if it's the translation or whatever. But I, I did not have the same problem. You I did, did not quite parse it because he says female privilege, and then he says be a man, and it doesn't like those two concepts are different. I don't. Anyway, this is stupid. It's a stupid. <laughs> it's not a particularly funny joke, and I'm harping on it. Um, I did, yeah, I kind of, you know, they were cute. Like, that was sort of sort of where I was left with. I, I couldn't tell if he doesn't like speedrunning or if he loves speedrunning. No, he does. He loves it. Yeah. He does his own speedrunning. Well, then, this is, so this was the thing. I went on a deep dive. I tried to find his actual speedruns, which were shockingly difficult to actually parse on YouTube. It's because he streams them. Yeah, he does and like he doesn't, Twitch. And, and he doesn't have a yeah. site. I did find his Majora's Mask one, where he's basically getting drunk all the way through it. Oh, yeah. Which I've actually seen a bit before, and that's why I sort of was... Your deception was extra good, because I thought he actually was, like, did speedruns. Well, it's because he would do... Uh, he doesn't just do speedruns. Usually when he's streaming, he has a side game. Yeah, there's, like, a gimmick going on. Yeah, yeah. of, like, people force him to do things as he's speedrunning. Yeah. I imagine one of them is drink yourself into a yeah, coma. There was, it was like a drinking game for Majora's Mask. But anyway, I did... Because I felt like it was only two little cartoons and I felt like I'd uh, let this run much longer than it should have considering what they were. So I actually went and watched a bit of his catalog. I watched his review of Undertale and I actually pretty much completely agreed with it because he's talking about how the game is super, super preachy in a way that like is sort of overwrought. And he also had some problems with technical things and whatnot, but which were, you know, whatever. Um, but I felt like the way he delivered his commentary was very annoying and very like everything sucksism, even though it didn't, even though that's not what he was saying at all. But there was this sort of like this real serious like obsession with cringiness that I find very annoying. Like I cringe at people who cringe at cringiness. Like it's so it's do you cringe at yourself? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, it is the set of all sets that are not members of so it, it was just sort of, it was that kind of like, it was that thing where people get obsessed with like, oh, people are having too much fun with this thing and they produce stupid art out of it and that makes me angry. And I was that like, yeah, not, they, make, they make stupid art. That whatever. is not what he's saying. No, he's not quite saying that, but it's that but like, if it, it it's sets that off microscopic all, obsession. It, with it. it it micro triggers you of remembering about something awful, and so because of that, you're just like, it is, I can't. It is that something awful in form of humor? Um, <sighs> I don't know. Like it. I mean, again, it's always this is the problem of doing. Like he's doing a review, a review, and it's always I have difficulty parsing people who do like comedy reviews because are we doing a bit or are you actually serious? How much do you actually mean what you're saying? And I don't, I don't know if that's sincere or not. So I, I don't know if to take him seriously or not. I like, think the not him in the interesting thing I quite like about because the the cartoons I find are funny, but I think Scott Falco is I think one of the more genuine YouTube personalities that's out there because mm -hmm. I don't think he manufactures any of the awkwardness you're describing. I suppose not. That's I, fair. I, that's yeah, I, and like there's this entire video which I'm surprised you didn't find. Like. Scott Falco with a side of salt. Oh yeah, I, saw, I didn't end up watching that because yeah. I figured it probably... And it's him actually just ripping into himself in terms of... <laughs> it's not what you would expect, which is that like self-deprecation humor. Yeah, yeah. It's actually him being like, here's what I wanted to do as an artist this year and it didn't yeah. work out. Here were some of my problems. Here's what I really want to do going forward. And it was just like very okay. touching That's and genuine. Maybe I should have watched that. Yeah, like yeah. I, I think what it is is that you... Clearly, take issue with like some of his delivery. I think, I it is think a bit, that's it's a bit to deliver because I I do think like that that puts me off. Yeah, and I think that's fair. Yeah, but I think that as a basically as an artist, he's pretty transparent, yeah. which I appreciate. Well, I liked I liked this his real speed run best of all because it was sort of like it was more. He was doing something he enjoyed. Yeah. Also, like, the happy mask salesman rants he was doing were actually very funny. <laughs> I haven't seen them. So. It's, it's really funny. Like, this this was the thing yeah. I wanted. I, I um, think another part of it is that, like, he succumbs to peer pressure, I think, oh, quite, maybe. quite easily. Well, And a lot of his original videos were much more in that style mm -hmm. and the stuff you hated. I think it's, like, to, to, to bring it back to your, your 
very accurate point about something awful is I used to really dig that stuff where they would go into forums of like weird internet perverts. And then and you had the reveal. Well, it's there's a certain point where you realize it's like just let the perverts do their thing. Yeah, like just, let the furries be furries. Let whatever. Like it's stupid. You don't have to like it. Just just it's let them such be them. Punching down. And he kept showing these video, like little clips of weird, awkward uh, uh, Undertale art in this review. And I was like, yeah, I don't like that. I think that's weird. And I know that this is like kind of makes you cringe. And it kind of makes me cringe well, too. But I don't care about it. In Undertale's I don't care case, about it. I think part well, of Well, it's it, so all-pervasive, right? Well, it, it's all so all-pervasive. It's commenting on how... Very pervasive it is in the YouTube thing, which is mm-hmm. kind of the oeuvre of YouTube. Yeah, I think it's it's he's in that environment. And yeah. thirdly, the game actively punches down fandom people. Oh, yeah. That's what the game is about, is about like how fandoms are shitty, ultimately. Because like a bunch of the characters go on about like, don't you have anything to Oh, well, yeah, to? the anime stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, well, yeah. well, not the anime stuff, just like the, uh, if you keep like pushing dialogues and things, mm-hmm. characters will just say, don't you have anything better to do? <laughs> I don't know if that, okay, there's that's a, not there's my a particular, it, it, it is a reading. I don't know if it is the oh, okay. reading. That's fine. But it's a reading that fits with Toby Fox's like history of creation and things like that. Yeah. Toby Fox is an interesting guy. I would love to pick his brain. But... Yeah, he's... But I always He's a Tommy Wiseau of his time. Of, of sort. Well, he always like I've tried to find interviews with him, and it's always done with this sort of level of removal. And it's because he's really severe social anxiety. Mm. But it's always he's always playing, he's always doing a bit. I'm really apparently obsessed with sincerity. This is apparently the one we're discovering today. <laughs> I think I already knew that. Well, yeah, you probably I, did. I think for yeah. you, a lot of what you want out of not all media, but especially sort of commentary or like you're working off of a base thing. Yeah. Is that you want people to be very, very genuine with their position and you want them to fully commit yeah. to what sort of thing they're going for rather than trying to do both. Because even if it's done well, mm-hmm. almost never is it done well for you. But even when it's done well, you're kind of like, oh, I wish I'm this sure just been. To that. Yeah, I just wish there were two. I get really turned off by hipster nihilism. That's what it is. Hipster is the wrong word. Poser nihilism? I don't know. Like that thing where like the, oh, I don't care about anything so I can make fun of everything. The South Park humor thing. First of all, South Park latest season, they care about all the things. It took them about 20 years to get there. Yeah, point They two. don't get too many points. Well, it took them 20 years to get there because four years ago they realized, oh shit, we were have to elect President for Donald Trump. <laughs> Point, that would, yeah. point two, is that why you stopped doing movie nights as you finally realized that? About well, it's funny about, it's funny about, there's nothing wrong with making fun of shit. Like, I think there's a level of punching down or whatnot. But the, the reason I like Mystery Science Theater, for, for example, there are times when it's just like, yeah, this movie is a piece of shit. But it's sort of like, the movie is kind of in on the joke. They're not watching it because they detest it. They're watching it because it is fun. Um, and you so what you're enjoy telling me it. is, it's not okay unless you like it. Mm, it's hard. Okay. That's a, that's a weird. That, okay. I don't entirely disagree with you, See, but I yeah. kind of do agree. I do disagree with you. I mean, if you came out and just Cause, said, cause if, if you came out and just said that, that'd be very genuine of you, <laughs> rather than just trying to do a bit and and maybe being genuine at the same time. But also, I would not find that as a moral failing if mm-hmm. that was true. Mm-hmm. I I would sort of be like, well, this is getting into you know taste <laughs> this thing about this podcast yeah, yeah. is about if i agreed with that i think i would just basically be saying no criticism is valid ever well what i was arguing is uh-huh. there's a difference between criticism yeah and pointing and laughing yeah there is well and, yes there yeah, is and what we're talking about is pointing and laughing not mm-hmm. criticism or pointing and laughing disguised as criticism don't confuse it just pointing and laughing. <laughs> sure okay well, it was it was funny. I came across this is this has spawned an interesting discussion. I found um, I uh, I run a role playing game thing for kids at a high school, and I'm running it out of a module. And I was trying to find if there were any art for some of the characters in it because the book didn't have that much. Because it was it's a white wolf thing, so you figure you know ninety every single well no no every you figure you know it's white wolf. Every fucking character that's ever appeared in a book has had a picture. And I accidentally found this, um, you know what the old school revival is? So this, these are people who play 
um, or create role playing games that are sort of in the model of like classic D and D, very dungeon crawly, kind of mechanically heavy. It, there's you know they, they can be quite interesting games. But anyway, I found this website by this guy who's kind of it's like an OSR review website. And it's one of those people who, like, really sneers at any role-playing game that has, like, um, narrative elements. It's sneeringly called story games. And you must not play story games because they are the pits of hell and have ruined role-playing forever. And this is not an exaggeration. This is what some of these people actually believe on this website, what this person has actually said. But I found his review of this module. And it actually, like, there were points that he liked. But it was also this, like totally missing the point of it like like obviously you don't like this thing like just at a philosophical level you don't like quote-unquote story games so why are we why even bother other than to punch down at it or punch down isn't the right word for it but other than to like vent your bitching which i did with jurassic world so now i should shut up (laughs) what Video Game Donkey, who mm. is a modern philosopher of our time, said, mm. and I think is actually very true, the reason why you review things you know you will not like mm. is because if you don't, you're going to... Someone one, else will. <laughs> one, you might miss out on something that just changes your mind completely. If you refuse the, if all if you refuse doors, the call. If all doors are closed, yeah. you can never look outside. And you'll never know if the grass is greener on the other side. Two, I don't think the other two, people are as wise as this man. Two, if you still don't like it, it is a remind. You get to sort of think about, okay, what don't I like about mm-hmm. this? You remain critical. You remain sharp. Mm-hmm. See, that's true. That that is what you, those things you just said are true. Here's what it is: it's going in with a good faith effort. Why do you assume that Scott Falco is not... I'm not talking about Scott Falco. I'm just no, talking no, about like... No, no, We're going back to the original oh, okay. topic here. What about Scott Falco did not seem to you as good faith? No, I think he was. I, I just didn't like the way he presented it. Well, I'm talking. About, we're talking about a whole other thing now. <laughs> well, I was trying to go back to the original podcast point. But fine. All right, let's talk about... Let's talk about story games. Story games. You should... You should... Like... Okay, no, don't do it. But <laughs> there are these people like who literally call people who like you know things like powered by the apocalypse and whatnot. They call them swine. Like it's really weird and creepy. Uh, I hate to tell you this, Sam. Oh, I know. This is not me being naive about the way the internet works, but like it's a weird, weird subculture. It's a subculture I'm all too familiar with. Yeah. For you see. <laughs> I am your that RPG man. pundit. <laughs> I'm uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, shit, the guy with the fedora. Oh god, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hang on, specify for the, a second. The guy who I think looks like you. Oh, Linkar. Yeah, I just don't see it. I, I just don't see it. Not you now, but yeah. younger you was that sort. I of suppose if, like when I've been chubbier, I suppose I've kind of had. The, he has a similar nose, but I don't really. It's not the first thing I think of. It's, also, I it's also the eyes and the glasses. Uh, and the, but I wear different. Uh, I know you don't wear a fedora. He's my libertarian like Alter opposite ego. world. Yeah, I don't know if he still is a libertarian. Maybe he's maybe he's changed that. Oh no, the people on the internet never grow up. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Anyway, I. I I give Scott Falco's speed totally legitimate speed runs and Scott Falco in general like a B. I, I, I kind of like, I could dig it if I got into it a little further, but I just don't care about cringing at things. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. That was a long ass discussion about mm, <laughs> things that had, well, it was a, se- they were two seven minute videos and I had only so much material I could cover in this. I wanted to give you a quick one. Yeah. And so. I know and I fucked it up. I was actually going to say. Uh, before we get to the, the common theme, if you would like to punish me for lollygagging so much, I will, I believe I have, I have earned it. I can't believe you say this because as I was on the way coming here, I was like, well, I was like, that would be a cruel punishment. Oh no. But it would also be like the most perverse sort of punishment, which is I enjoy this. I know Sam will hate it. Well, how about we have, as, as with the last punishment, we have. It's also incredibly short. Let's have a stay of execution this time. Okay. We'll do it next time. Or you can give me like a punishment. Or what I may do is as a, as a, as an antipasta. Ah. 
uh, is we will watch it, and then if you feel like I want to record and talk about this, okay, we do All like right. a little bonus material. I'm kind of into that. All right. All right. So what's our common theme this week? Uh, what's Can the... you spell sincerity with a C? <laughs> oh, it's, it's C? No. Oh, sorry. What the fuck am I talking about? It's not C. It's... For cranberries. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I had my brain lapsed there. It's E. It's, it's E. I don't know where that came Etiquette. from. Etiquette. Etiquette. Because we just spent a century talking a about... Century. Talking about conduct and behavior. I like etiquette. Okay, I'll go with etiquette. That was a good one. C. What the fuck am I talking about? All right. What the fuck am I talking about? So. What are you going to make me do? Sam. Oh. In the spirit of giving you more short stuff that I presume you can do in a timely manner. Okay, this time I will. And also in the spirit of C. Mm -hmm. I (laughs) have given you an open personal project. You can watch... Any number mm. and any combination. Well, I like this. Okay, I got to choose my. Oh yeah. My suffering or right. of the That's a a videos thing. done by Dankmus, who is on YouTube. Okay. My personal recommendations are yes, Clown College, <laughs> and it's a handgun. <laughs> well, I like the titles already. <laughs> Okay, so I can just choose any and number. Choose any number. All right. Just. Pick whatever. Okay. I believe in you. So, coincidentally, I kind of have a, a smorgasbord for you as well, but Ooh. mostly because I'm not sure what you've seen and what you haven't seen. Great. So, you knew it was going to come to this. It's some Star Trek. Okay. So, uh, I'm excited. I have, for this. I have three movies to choose from. and Wait, I, movies? Movies, yes. Oh, shit. Um, I do have a. Uh, failing all else, I do have a couple of episodes, but okay. let's go with movies first. So, either Star Trek First Contact. Okay. If you have not seen it. Okay. Uh, Wrath of Khan. Okay. Or Star Trek V, The Journey Home. Or is it Star Trek so, IV, The Journey Home? Uh, so the Journey Home. I have seen all of the Star Trek movies past uh, Generations. Really? Yeah. So, Generations onwards, I've seen all of them. I've seen Nemesis. I've seen... That one with the face people. <laughs> I've seen First Contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen Generations. Okay, okay. But these, the, the other ones were all Kirk No, ones. yeah. But I've uh, seen one. I've okay. seen the first Star Trek movie somehow. Oh, I it's think, so bad. I think my Trekkie mother, before she passed on and went mm. and went on to the... Where's Kalish supposed to be? <laughs> Stovacor. Yeah. I, I, hate, I hate that I know that. <laughs> when she went on to Stovacor... <laughs> Uh, I'm sure, like, she must have sat me down and, like, she was a hardcore Trekkie. Yeah, and that's yeah. not something I ever got to talk about. You've told me about that. Yeah. yeah. So I have not seen Wrath of Khan okay. or The Journey Home. I would recommend Wrath of Khan. Yes. I think that's the one. I don't want to hear about invisible aluminum. I don't give you a don't shit. You don't want to hear about whales? <laughs> Fuck whales. I, l- I like that movie. No, watch watch Wrath of Khan. It's the best one. Yeah, no, it's. I'm surprised. I thought about it. I was like, no, I have never seen... Wrath of Khan. There you go. All right. I'll watch you, it. you might want to watch Space Seed, which is the, the episode it's based on. I've read a summary of it. Okay. That. That's, you, you don't need to know much. Yeah. like base, I, I remember reading a lot about like mm-hmm. Khan and the eugenics wars and shit because I was like, well, I'm going to need to know this at some point in my life. There's going to be a girlfriend or someone out there who's going to just stop me and go, you need to quickly explain the Star Trek eugenics wars in five minutes or less. <laughs> So I'm prepared. There you go. Uh, we'd like to thank Irritating Rainbow for the use of our theme song, You Broke It. You can find a link to that in the description. Um, final thought. Final thought. What are we got today? Your bonus punishment. Oh, okay. I like this. Is going to be Gallo Sangen by Japanese band The Policeman. <laughs> like a police band? <laughs> You play the bass in police band. Fun fact, <laughs> there is no bass in this song. <laughs> I'm not going to explain that joke. I'm just going to end the podcast here. <laughs> yeah, that's fair.